Good morning, folks. It's a cold one this morning. Woke up a little freezing, but it's sun's out now, so everything's starting to thaw out. We're still out here working. Pouring tomorrow, 10 a.m. We've got the rod busters out here tying up what's left of the rebar, which only the gray beans are left. Yesterday we had a full day of rebar finishing up some footings. What you guys see here is the gym area that I was standing on a couple videos back that you guys saw, or the last video I believe it was. We'll pour this tomorrow. We'll start walls next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, pour Thursday. And then we're on to slab, guys. This is it for foundation work here. We have a lot more work to be done. And you guys can see here, we got the excavators back filling the sector D area. So they got A, C, B ready to go, working on D. So after this, we'll jump back to A and start on the off slab work. Guys, we're gonna go into a little bit of detail on how we go about, and you guys see all this steel here. It's kind of intricate on how it, where everything goes. You gotta make sure you're definitely placing the rebar for what it calls for in your structural drawings. I'm waiting on the city inspector coming. And we've got special inspector as well. So the work is definitely gonna be checked, especially on a project like this. Last thing you want is for uh, rebar to be rejected and then you gotta cancel everything and it's just, it pushes everything back and it's no good. So you definitely gotta be ahead of these guys, making sure everything is where it's supposed to be. Not only the spacing of the rebar, the clearance, but the size of the rebar. We've got four bar, five, seven, eight bar. We're in the job trailer now. I want to show you guys what it actually, what all goes into what we, what you guys just saw out there. On a job like this, not everything is the same as far as the sizes of the footing, what the footings, rebar calls out, the sizes of the walls, the rebar in the walls. So you definitely gotta be on your toes when you're looking at the, your uh, drawings to make sure everything's right out there. Uh, here's an example of what you guys just saw. If you guys take a look at this, this is the structural drawings for sector D. Okay, and you guys look at here, this is what we're working on, this section here. Which is, this is the gym area here. And then you got the trash enclosure and the uh, electrical room here. So when you come into you have your details callouts for where you're at based off of grade lines. So we go to six and I know from this point, my wall detail is on 303 detail two. So if we come to page 303 detail two, we've noticed that our wall actually got five inches two inches bigger from what we typically were building. So you can definitely get confused on something like that. Here's our stem wall. You've got your brick ledger, which your brick will sit on, plus a 10 inch uh, framing. So, and then you guys seen the, the sizes of the, if you go back, we've got our footing details here. It's an 18. D36W, which will stand for 18 inches in depth and 36 inches in width. We go to our footing schedule here, 18 inches, 36 here, and we follow along. This is what this is what our rebar should be. So it says four, number five, continuous, number five, your transverse at nine inches on center. So, and then again, you just kind of have to follow along. See another detail here, right here, our footing widens. This goes into 24D72W, which is here, which it changes to number seven, 10 inches on center, and seven, number seven is continuous. So you see how all of this can change at any at any point on how it's engineered and how it's designed. So you definitely gotta be on the lookout on that when you guys are putting in your steel. Beyond this, we submit everything to the rebar manufacturer, which they actually come out with the shop drawings, which goes a little bit into more detail, which would look something like this. This is important what we're doing now, but it's just an example. If you guys see here, here's our elevator pit. Now we've got all our rebar, how it came from the manufacturer. Makes it a little bit more simple to 
when you're tying everything. So, guys, that's just a little bit more informative video here. If you guys have any more questions on how exactly something we do, we're in the Pacific Northwest and state of Washington. This is typically how we do it. It's interesting to see. I know we've been getting comments from the East Coast or Southern California on some of our work differs from theirs. But either way, it all works. You guys saw what it looks like in the drawings. This is what it actually looks like in the field. You guys saw it right here. It called for four number fives with nine inches on center. Your transverse. Okay. And then you follow here, and then here are detail changed. This was the 24D72W, 24, 24, inch, 24 inches in depth, six feet wide. And it changed to number seven bar, seven across, and then 10 inches on center, the transverse bar. So you guys could take a look at what that looks like. Your inspector's gonna come, he's gonna check your clearance. You have three inches, we've got a three inch dobies are there. He'll check your spacing. Make sure you do have the number, the proper bar that it calls for, which in this case is number seven. So that's what it looks like in the field, guys. That's what it looks like in the drawings. Uh, this is typically how we do our setup here, two by 12s. We, uh, we call these clips. We just use it. Not only does it hold our footings together, but it will hold our templates, which these templates, all they're doing is holding up our uprights. So right here, once you get your template up, you can do your layout for what it calls for. In this case, it's 24 inches. And uh, that's basically it, guys. We've got our bolts in. Gotta make sure those are in the proper place. Definitely don't wanna mess that up. So this right here, what you guys see is the trash enclosure. And on the other side of those bars are is the electrical room. So all of this actually sits out from the building, which is why we have galvanized bolts out here for the outdoors. So guys, stay tuned for more videos.